I pray that when you speak, that miracles would happen. I pray that when you pray, that miracles would happen. I pray that chains will be broken off of your life. I pray that when you touch somebody, I pray that they will receive healing. <laughs>
Because one thing about going through something that's so traumatic and God delivers you from that thing, your level of faith increases like never before, right? Because you have first hand experience in what God can do. I mean, I saw miracles taking place in my life. And so now I can believe God for the impossible. Why? Because the things that I was going through seemed impossible. And only God himself could come in and make that change for me. And he did that. And I'm so grateful for him. I'm grateful for uh, the, the connections that I had throughout this year that helped to kind of uh, facilitate that that transformation and that miracle, uh, people that God placed in my life that helped make that thing come to pass. I thank God for his people that are genuinely um, connected to him, um, that has his heart and his compassion for others. We need each other. God needs us. We are his feet and his hands. You know, I've heard it mentioned before. And that is so true. God needs you. He needs to work through people in order for um, uh, people to see who he is, right? That's going to be manifested through us. It's going to be walked out through us, through his people. And so I'm just grateful again for that. And I, um, I'm i just blown away at where I am versus where I was. Uh, this time last year, night and day, you cannot tell me that God is not real. You cannot tell me that God is a miracle worker. You cannot tell me that God won't do what he said that he would do. I know God is faithful and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful I'm just so grateful. And so as we go into 2024, and you might be like I was this time last year, I want to encourage you that your hope is in God. You know, some things that you're going to have to do on your own. And what I mean by that is there's some things that you have to um, let go of. It's some decisions that you have to make. Um, it's some things that you have to confront, right? It's some doorways that you must close. You have to make certain decisions. You got to make up in your mind that you want God in a real way, right? And that you want your life to be different because what I want to do, I want to be able to leave a legacy behind uh, with my family, not those generational things, those generational curses that that kind of been been um, uh, playing out in my family for decades. And and um, I wanted something different for my family. I want something different uh, for me. I want to be something different. I want to start something different. Right. So you have got to have that same type of mindset. We don't want to be in a mindset where we want to just um, keep on. Uh, perpetuating the same old type of behaviors, the same old type of thinking, the way of thinking, um, the same old addictions, uh, mannerisms, attitudes uh, that has plagued your family. Um, there's got to be a difference with you. There has to be a difference with you. In order for you to get something different, then you have to do something different. And for the last month, year, 10 years, even more, you've kind of done the same thing over and over again. So now we're in a different season. We're in a different time, right? I believe 
that Jesus Christ is coming back the same he, he said he would. And so I believe what the Bible says. I take him at his word that he is going to come back. And so there are some things that has to take place. And, and one thing is that we have to quit making excuses for um, the place that we're at. We can't just keep sitting in that place and refusing to make any changes, refusing to take any steps that will bring about a change or bring about something different in your life, right? Because why would we dare complain about what we allow, right? We can't constantly just complain about something that we're permitting in our lives. We got to do something to make a difference because why? Because if you continue to allow certain things over and over again, then you become the one that's at fault, not the people, not your job, not your spouse, not not whoever, not your children. It the buck stops with you and you can make a difference and you can be different. With God on your side, there's nothing that you cannot do. But do not think that God is just gonna come in and just rescue you and you have to do absolutely nothing. If you want it, you gotta go for it. If you want it, you gotta take every step possible to get to where you want. Right? Sometimes it's gonna mean that you're gonna have to let some people go. You're gonna have to let some things go. You gotta be different. You gotta want different. You gotta pursue different. You cannot continue to allow certain things in your life. Otherwise, you're gonna to continue to be in the same spot year after year after year. And we're getting older. Some of you, I know that y'all are young and all of that. You think you got the world and got your whole life ahead of you and you do. But still, the outcome is going to depend on you and what you invest in your life. Because God has got to be first. The Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right to man, right? But the end thereof is death and destruction. So even sometimes when we're younger and even sometimes when we're older, because some of these older people, we still have foolish ways of thinking as well. But sometimes we think, hey, we just partying and we having a good time and we just enjoying life. We telling people what we think. We getting people told. We live in our best life. We're doing all of this stuff, all this me, 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 I, 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 I. And we're not putting God in the equation at all. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man. So this thing seems right to you. It seems like you're living your best life, but the end thereof is death and destruction. So we want 2024 to be different, right? We want to have a life, abundant life. We want to be able to have peace. And that peace only comes through Jesus Christ. And so in 2024, I offer you Christ. He truly makes the difference in our lives. He made a difference in my life, even though, even though I've been serving him for years, I've been serving him for decades, but even a person that's that's been, been, been saved for a long time and know God and know the will of God, we're still human. And there are times that we're going to fail. There are some times that we're going to be tempted. There are some times where we're going to uh, uh, experience depression and anxiety and fear and all of that. But we got to make sure that that thing does not take hold of us and become a stronghold where it's actually running our lives or ruling our lives. Right? Because anytime the enemy sees that there's any doorway that's open, of course, he's going to come through that crack and he's going to wreak havoc on our lives. But we have power and we have authority that has been given to us by Christ Jesus that we can put an end to what the devil is trying to do in our lives. So I challenge you in 2024 that you will come out of agreement what the enemy has said about you for your life. Because one of the, the things that I understand that we've done, and I, I realized that I did that too, is I started accepting this is just my plight. This is just what it is. So I come into agreement that I'm, 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 I'm sick. I came into agreement that I'm uh, depressed. I came into uh, agreement that I'm not going to make it. I came into agreement that I'm going to die. I came into agreement with those negative things that the enemy has spoken over my life. 
And when I became, when I came into agreement with those things, they begin to manifest. So no, I'm challenging you in 2024 that you come out of agreement with what the devil has said about you. You will live and you will not die and you will proclaim the word, the goodness of the Lord. You are above only and you are not beneath. God has made you the head and not the tail. He didn't make you the head so you go out here and brag about all the things that you got. And it has nothing to do with material things. Don't you understand that? I know a lot of times, especially in this Western culture, we think that blessings are tied to things, to material things. And we forget that there are millionaires and billionaires even that are, uh, are are on the verge of taking their own lives, that are suicidal, that are, that are unhappy, that are unfulfilled. It has nothing to do with material things. It's something uh, deeper. It's got to do with your spirit, your soul, the deeper part of you. That's what it means. If I could have that type of life and have that type of life more abundantly, then I'm truly living. And you can truly live in 2024, right? You can make a decision right now that your tomorrow is going to be different. In fact, your day can be different. Your today can be different. But I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you. Come out of agreement with what's been spoken, the things that's been said, the generational curses, your mama, how she was, your daddy, how he was, um, how your grandparents were, the type of people, your cousins, your aunties, all of them, how they are. It doesn't matter. It does not have to be the way that you are, right? Again, the book stops with you. You can be different. You can leave a legacy behind for your children and your grandchildren to be the one that be that that's holy to be the one that loves God to be the one that's God feared to be the one to carry the gospel the be to be the one to make a difference in the life of your family you can be that different I don't care what you're involved in I don't care what you've done I don't care you know what side of the tracks you grew up on that doesn't matter the Bible says that we are reborn, right? That we could be reborn. We're made anew. We're not who we were before. You know, we're not the same that we were before. We've been bought with a price. Hallelujah. Now we belong to Jesus Christ and now we can be different. Now we can carry on a new legacy, not one that's been passed down from generations to generations, from family to family. No, that does not have to be you. It's time for you to be different. Right. I can't say that every day is going to be sunshine and roses. Not necessarily. It's not going to be that. That's not even realistic. Right. That's not even realistic. Every day is not going to be sunshine and roses. But every day can be filled with purpose. Every day can be filled with hope. Every day can be filled with joy. You might not be happy all the time, but you can have a joy that cannot be denied. Right. A joy that cannot be understood. A joy that the world can't give to you and the world can't take it away. You can have that by being connected with Jesus Christ. He makes the difference. But like I've been saying all year, there's a purpose and a plan for your life. Again, I don't care who has spoken what over your life. Even you have a purpose. God created you for a particular reason, for a particular thing. And you do not want to leave out of this earth without, without accomplishing that, that God has had created you for. He created you for a purpose, uh, something specific. And it's time for you to walk out in that. It's time for you to not be afraid Right, because we allow the spirit of fear to hover over us and just, and keep us in this cage, in this box where we're afraid to step out and be great. Right, not be great in the spirit. Not, I'm sorry, not be great in the flesh, but be great in the spirit, and not just be great in ourselves, but be great in the spirit of God. It's time for you to do something different. It's time for you to stop giving that which is holy to the dogs, 
right? Casting your pearl to the swine. God has given you something special. I don't know what it is. You might not even understand completely what it is because sometimes we look at our gift and our purpose um, and we try to compare it with somebody else's. And then we think that what they uh, have is much better than what I have, but it's not. It is not. God needs you for your particular gift for your particular talent, for your particular purpose. Nobody can talk like you. Nobody can walk like you. Nobody can speak like you. Nobody can touch the people that God needs you to touch like you. Nobody can be you but you. So let's step out and just do what God has called us to do. In 2024, let's purpose in our hearts. Let's purpose in our minds that this year, we're going to be obedient to God. One obedience at a time, right? Because you know God said, do this, and you keep doing that. How about this year, God said, do this. Let's try to do that, right? And then the next thing, God said, do this. Let's try to do that, right? Let's see what it is that God is trying to perfect in you. Hallelujah. God wants to use you to bring glory to him. He wants to use you to make a difference in this world. He wants to use you to touch somebody's life. And it may just be a couple of words that you might say to somebody that could change their very life. You, yeah, you. You're like, not me, God. He, he don't know everything that I've been through. He don't know everything that I've done. Uh-uh, nobody knows. Uh -uh, I can't even hardly speak, just like it was with Moses. Like, I know you're not calling me because I stutter. I, yeah, I can't go speak. God said, I'm calling you. You open up your mouth and I'll tell you what to say. God will use you in spite of your own imperfections. He'll use you uh, in spite of your weaknesses. He'll use you in spite of your deficiencies. Mm. He'll use you in spite of your deficiencies. If you have a heart that's sold out to God, no, you won't get it perfect every time. But if your heart is sold out to God and you have a mindset and a heart that wants to please God, God is going to use you in your natural, okay, no, 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 in your imperfect state. God is going to use you to perform miracles. Hallelujah. God is going to use you to touch generations. Hallelujah. And those generations are going to start with your own family. Your own family. Because if they see uh, that God transformed your life, hallelujah, then they'll know that God is really God. Amen. Because if your family can see you at your worst and at your lowest, if your family can see you at your nastiest, but they see a transformation that they know only God can do, my God, that right there, just you being transformed, allowing yourself to be transformed and, st and stop fighting it, man, that could speak to your children, your children's children, your aunties and your cousins, and even your mama and your daddy even your spouse, whoever that needs to be touched by God. Allow God to use you. Allow, allow God to uh, make you his greatest miracle, if it's possible. Let God uh, transform your life in a way where your family will come running to him and say, I yield, I yield. I know that God is real because he did it for my mama. He did it for my sister. He did it for my father. He did it for my cousin and my aunties. He did it for my grandparents. I know that God can do it for me. God has no respect of a person. So if he did it for one, he is able to do it for all. Because God has no favorites. Right? I say I'm his favorite. But God has no favorites because what he did for me, he'll do for you. Amen. God is a faithful God. But I wanted to encourage you. I'm not going to hold you too long today. But make some. I know the New Year's resolutions. I know that most of the time by week two or even by month two, um, you've kind of over all of that stuff and you go back to doing what you've done before. But don't let you surrendering your life completely be something you do as just a New Year's resolution. And then it just fizzle away with everything else. 
It's a journey, but it starts with your decision to want to be better, to want to surrender. It starts with you making the decision to do that. And I promise you that God will meet you there. Purpose in your heart that this year you're going to connect yourself with some people that are that are spiritual, that not just spiritual, because I, I have to uh, be careful even using that because everybody's everybody's spiritual. And they connected to the wrong spirit. Connect yourself to the people that, that are connected to the right spirit. And that is the spirit of God. And then seek after people that can help you grow in the Lord and in the word. And you know what? Even us that's been saved for a long time, we need people too. We need somebody that can be there for us and even, even help us to be accountable. We need somebody to pray for us and pray with us through certain situations because we all get weak sometimes. And we are, the Bible said that we are to bear one another's burdens, but also he said that we are to bear our own burdens at the same time. But we need to be connected to people that are connected to God that can help us get through some very difficult situations. And uh, we in this thing together. We are brother and sister in Christ and we can make it 2024 I believe God is going to do a lot of things in 2024. I believe that God is exposing some things and, and, and he needs to do that. I believe God is ripping the covers off of some things and he needs to do that. But don't let you be one of those covers that need to be uncovered, right? Or need to be exposed. But there's a lot more that's going to come in this year. But I did want to just encourage you to seek after God like never before this year. Seek after God. But have a, have a time of praise and worship. Just the fact that God brought you through this year and that God brought you um, through some hard times and even some good times. There's been ups and there's been downs. There's been ins and there's been outs. There's been rain and there's been sunshine. There's been all of that going on this year. But look at you. You made it. So we honor God. We want to honor God and thank God for that. So let's see what the next chapter is going to be, right? Let's turn the page on that old stuff, even on 2023. Some things we need to leave behind in 2023 and we need to find out what it is that God has in store for us in 2024. So we have to be open, right? We have to be open now to whatever it is that God wants to do, whatever it is God wants me to do, whatever God wants you to do, who he wants you to be most importantly, because he doesn't necessarily want you to just do, do, do. He wants you to be, be, be. Amen. And that starts with a transformation. That starts for, from uh, knowing who he is. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is Yahweh. He is Emmanuel. He is king of all kings, a lord of all lords, a lily in the valley, the wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's my bright and mighty morning star. He is all of that. Ha! He is Jehovah Jireh. He provides for me. He is God of all gods. He is the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Ah, the good shepherd. He is all those things we need for him to be. He is, I am that I am. Ha! That's who he is. The I am that I am. Whatever you need is in the I am. Whatever your heart desires is in the I am. If you need peace, it's in the I am. Hallelujah. The I am that I am. My God. Well, hallelujah. Well, praise be to God. I'm excited to be going into 2024 with you. I'm looking forward to what it is God has in store for me. And I'm, in, I'm excited about what God has in store for you. But I believe it's going to be epic. I believe that God is going to do some great and mighty things in me for sure. And I'm excited. Hallelujah. I went through my pruning season and now it's time for my birthing season. Amen. My blossoming season. 
Well, praise God. Wait a minute, I'm not going to hold you any, any longer. Thank you again for taking time out of your day to watch my videos. I really do truly appreciate it. I pray God's blessings upon you. I pray that you will get to know God in a way like you've never known before. I pray right now in the name of Jesus for you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might that you will put on the whole armor of God, that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and that you will use all the material, all the weapons, all the equipment that he has provided to you to be able to win in this season of your life. Amen. I pray blessings upon your children and your grandchildren. I pray for your marriage. I pray that for your marriage to be a marriage where God is the center of that. I pray that the love between you as a husband and you as a wife will blossom into something beautiful and not this, not just something that just that is based on uh, what you do for me and I do for you. I just pray that both of you now put Jesus Christ in the center and it's your desire to please him. And then as you please him, you're also pleasing each other and you're growing together. Amen. Let God be in the middle of that, that three strand cord. He's wrapped up in there and he's holding you together. My prayer is that you will give up trying to be right all the time so that you can be righteous. Give up your right to be righteous. Amen. I love marriage. And so I do. I pray God's blessing for you and your marriage. Amen. I pray that as you go into this season, I pray that God will just bless you and that leads you and guides you and show you exactly what he wants you to do. Show you what steps to take, what uh, to say no to, what to say yes to. I pray God that will fill you with his Holy Spirit, that you will baptize, be baptized in his Holy Ghost until you're overflowing with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I pray that when you speak, that miracles would happen. I pray that when you pray, that miracles would happen. I pray that chains will be broken off of your life. I pray that when you touch somebody, I pray that they will receive healing and they will receive direction and they will receive deliverance. I pray that God will just touch you in a special way, that he would use you as an instrument, as a conduit to change somebody else's life. And I pray that you will be the very first recipient of the miracles of God. Amen. As he continued to use you and work through you. I pray for healing for your body. If there's anybody that's that's uh, going through a sickness right now, I pray that God will touch you even right now, that your body will be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray from the crown of your head all the way down to the sole of your feet. I pray that God will begin to move on you right now. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that every cell will line up to the word of God, that how God created you and how God designed you, that it will fall into place and that you will function. Your body will function in the way that God created it. I pray for healing in the name of Jesus to take place in your body in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. God, do what only you can do. And I glorify you and I praise you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to stop right there. But again, I pray blessings upon you. Happy New Year, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. In the meantime, let me go ahead and just say this. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works. And they're going to glorify our Father, which is in heaven. Again, Happy New Year. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support and your faithfulness just to watching my channel. God bless you. Bye.